These last few weeks, we have been looking at what it means to dare to dance again. Today is no different, except we will be looking at those people who have touched our lives. In such a way, they made a difference in our lives, but also in our behavior. People who weren't afraid to stand up for the weak, the suffering, the lost, for our God. I had such a person who reached out to me and gently led me to believe in myself again. And most importantly, to believe in a God who never once stopped loving me, even when I could not see him or feel him around me. As a child, I stuttered terribly. I couldn't finish a sentence if my life depended on it. I was falling over my words. I had teachers throughout grammar school who treated me as if I had a learning disability. My stuttering grew worse as I grew, and I pulled myself into myself and became silent. I attended an all-girls Catholic high school where I barely got in with my test scores as low as they were. Call it fate, call it blind luck. But I had a homeroom teacher by the name of Sister Marie St. John. From the first moment I entered her classroom, she made a point of getting to know me, of reaching out to me. She asked me several times a week to come after school, clean blackboards and erasers. How many of you remember being in grammar school and having to erase these monstrous blackboards and opening the windows and clapping together those monstrous erasers and this cloud of chalk dust surrounded us? I thought this was a punishment. I know there was something I did wrong. I just didn't know what it was. But I was there several times a week. But what I didn't know is she was beginning to create a sacred space where I can be who I am without fear of judgment. She slowly helped me pulled down the walls that I had fortified for years. She guided me over the next several years through the obstacles that manifested themselves in my stuttering. Her patience, her understanding, and her unconditional love helped me see myself not as a failure, but as a beloved child of God. We all have people in our lives who've touched us deeply, that they left footprints on our hearts, who guided us and taught us, challenged us to become strong, confident individuals made in the image of God. Those individuals who, through their example, opened our eyes and our hearts and challenged us into action armed with the armor of God. We read in Ephesians chapter 6 that we are called to put on the belt of truth. Putting on the belt of truth means we agree with God about what he says is true. We know the enemy will attack us by distorting truth, and we need to make a declaration of truth. We need to counter with that declaration to the world. We need to wrap ourselves up in the breastplate of righteousness that covers our heart. While the belt of truth is about knowing what is right and true, it's the breastplate of righteousness is about doing it. Ephesians also calls us to put our feet into the gospel of peace. When a Roman soldier would go into battle, he would 
dig his feet into the ground so that he could stand strong and firm. We need to preach the gospel of peace to ourselves every day. This is how we dig in our feet into that ground through the gospel of peace. Ephesians also asks us to take up our faith as a shield against the arrows of the devil. Dr. James Dobson states, the devil's most powerful tool is confusion. Confusion is the main factor that shreds one's faith. Confusion sows seeds of doubt. Let me repeat that. Confusion sows seeds of doubt. Doubt, and we second guess where God is in our lives. Does he even care? Does he really exist? Thankfully, we all have examples of people of great faith and determination in our lives who have had a personal impact. Then there are those people who stand out in history. For me, 1961, there was a man by the name of John Fitzgerald Kennedy. While an imperfect and flawed individual, he spoke 17 of the most inspiring words in the 20th century in his inauguration address. He had just declared that the torch had been passed to a new generation of Americans born in this country, sorry, born in this century, tempered by war, disciplined by hard and bitter peace, proud of our history, and pledged to pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, and oppose any foe in order to assure survival and success of liberty. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. We were in the midst of a Cold War, rising tensions between the United States and the Soviet Russia, and we're in the throes of another Red Scare. We had the space race in full sway, and atomic weapons were a growing threat. John Kennedy entered office in the midst of all of this. I believe the purpose of John Kennedy's message that day was to demonstrate the boldness of the United States in facing the challenges posed by an escalating Cold War. He gave us hope, hope that together, as a nation, all things are possible. In 1963, there was another man several hundred miles across the Atlantic Ocean, who in front of the Roman Curia, in front of dozens of cardinals, Pope John XXIII opened the Second Vatican Council with one word that rang across every seminary, convent, church across the world. He cried out that one word, aggiornamento, which means bring it up to date. Open the spiritual windows of the church and let the Holy Spirit in. Open the windows of our souls and let the Holy Spirit in. He saw how the Catholic Church and other denominations were floundering and wanted to pull people into a deeper relationship with the church, and more so with God. He saw a way out from under the heavy laden rituals that weighed down so many of our churches, and wanted a new spirit to flow through the church, 
to deepen people's relationship with God, increase involvement in the church, and care for those in need, both physically and spiritually. We in the United Methodist Church have had many leaders who speak eloquently, who inspire us to deepen our relationship with God and take the next step. Two weeks ago, I listened to Reverend Dan Morley's sermon for the first time. For many of you, it was a homecoming reunion, and his words still ring true in my ears today. What a blessing it must have been to have had him as your pastor. Who, like Pastor Mary, call us each week to stand up and walk the talk. Or, as our current theme suggests, dare to dance again. In our scripture this morning, we read about an Ethiopian eunuch. Now, I want you to picture this scene in your mind. Here is this foreigner visiting the city, sitting in an empty chariot, reading the prophet Isaiah. The chariot was probably, oh, twice the size of this lectern. And he was crouched against one of the inner walls. And he was reading. Then we see Philip, inspired by God, who approaches the chariot, hears the eunuch reading, and asks him, do you understand what you're reading? And the eunuch responded, how can I? Unless someone guides me. In other words, the eunuch was reading words that just didn't make sense to him. He needed someone to help him understand. Someone to point the way. Then the eunuch invited Philip in and sat beside him. And I imagine the eunuch humbly asking Philip, help me to understand what I'm reading. What does it mean to me? What does it mean for my future? The eunuch, like us, needed someone to guide, to teach, and to lead us. Think about that image again of this man sitting in the chariot, alone and without distractions. Then imagine yourselves sitting in that quiet, sacred space you have at home where you read scripture, pray, ponder your daily devotionals, or just sit still and listen. Sometimes you're reading words that at first appear empty. This is when I invite you to dance with the Holy Spirit. Invite God into your lives. Allow him to show you the way to inner peace, understanding, joy, action. Transformation is possible when we abide with God. If we look at the Gospel of John, verse 15, uh, chapter 15, John is speaking about Jesus as the vine, and we the branches. Our strength, our ability to rise up strong in faith, armed with the armor of God, in order to stand up and defend not only our faith, but the justice that all God's creation deserves. And it's because of our rootedness in Jesus that all of this is possible. We, each and every one of us, we are called to be those people who inspire, guide, and lead. Throwing open the windows of our souls and crying out to those who would follow us. Let the Holy Spirit in. Allow the Holy Spirit to open your eyes, open your hearts as the Spirit guides you into a closer relationship with God. It is then that we are dancing with the Holy Spirit. Whether we are called to be that voice to our families, 
our neighborhoods, our communities, within our church or in civil government. We are called to reach out to those who inspire us and learn from them. But more importantly, I'm asking you to dare to dance again by praising God through the Holy Spirit to open up our eyes and guide our steps. And all God's people cried, Amen. Thank you.